What's going on everyone? This is TIE Fighter and today we're going to talk about a game that I am particularly excited about. At E3 2017 we got our first look at Anthem, the upcoming looter shooter Iron Man simulator from Bioware and EA. Since then we've seen some pretty significant ups and downs as far as consumer expectation of the game. Some are looking for the next Mass Effect or Dragon Age in terms of storytelling, relationships and world building. At the same time others are looking to Anthem to replace all others in the loot grind based pseudo MMORPG category. While I'm not entirely sold on the fact that Anthem is going to fit either of these molds to a T, I'm still optimistic. The game is still months away, but already we've seen gameplay, interviews with lead developers, and gathered every piece of info we can get our hands on. With all that put together, here are five things that I think Anthem is already doing right and why it seems to be headed in the right direction. The first piece of Anthem that I think shows us is that it's headed generally in the right direction is the hub area. So we know the hub is an extremely important part of the game because you end up spending a huge amount of time there. So think uh, Grand Central Station from The Division or The Tower from Destiny. These are places that you are going back to over and over and over again. So at this point we know that the main hub area of Anthem is called Fort Tarsus. It's named after General Helena Tarsus, uh, who was part of the Legion of Dawn, which was a group of soldiers that helped establish the fort approximately 500 years prior to the, uh, the, the time that the game takes place. And we know a couple of things already about Fort Tarsus. Uh, the biggest one that we know already is that it's going to be entirely your own. And what this means is that there will be no other javelins or no other players in your Fort Tarsus. Your Fort Tarsus is yours, and when you go back to it, you're gonna be alone. Uh, this is also reflected in the decision that you make uh, throughout the game so we've been told that there will be uh, decisions that you can make kind of binary decisions this way or that way uh, and you'll see these reflected in your Fort Tarsus and you'll never be able to see what other what another person's Fort Tarsus looks like Another thing that's unique about Fort Tarsus is that it's inhabited by four different factions. Now we've met these different factions through some of the trailers that they've released so far. Uh, the factions are the Sentinels, which are the protectors of Fort Tarsus, the Corvus, which are kind of a sneaky intelligence gathering agent group. Uh, there are the Cyphers, and they work more on uh, psychic ability and also high levels of analytic ability to, to help you throughout your quests. And then finally there's the Arcanist, and they study kind of the mystic nature of Anthem and the world and the the shapers and the, and the machines that they've created. So your interactions with these different uh, players within Fort Tarsus will shape how your hub world looks. And I think that's really cool. So you're customizing the world that you're going to be spending some of the most amount of time in. And so I'm very interested to see how Fort Tarsus is going to evolve throughout the game. You know, it'll probably be fairly vanilla when we start and then slowly evolve into something maybe a little bit more unique, something a little bit more primal, maybe focus more on one faction or another that you've spent more time focusing on the side quest for so i'm very excited for fort tarsus and we'll see what happens to it as we play through the game and, and how it evolves Number two on the list is secrets. So we've seen the world of Anthem. We've seen how large it is and how vertical it is. And we've also been told that there's going to be a lot on the map uh, that they don't tell you about right away. It's not like every special thing is going to have a little piece on the mini map. And so there's going to be a great deal of exploration to this game, which I think is awesome. So you think of games like Skyrim, uh, games like Dark Souls, where they don't really give you all the information that you need in order to find every piece of the game that, that's there. And that's entirely okay. We want to spend time in this world and we want to discover it without being hand fed it uh, and that's going to lead to a really strong sense of accomplishment and I'm very very excited about that. I think a good example of what people are looking for comes from Dark Souls so I don't know if you remember Ash Lake you can see it in the background gameplay it was actually hidden behind a, a wall and if you swung your sword on this wall and a whole area opened up and there was nothing pointing you in that direction there's no sign that says Ash Lake here but if you explored and you tried new things you were given entire pieces of the game that you never knew were there before and I think we can look forward to this kind of thing with Anthem so that'll be very very exciting. I can't wait to see what they've got for us. Number three on the list is going to be raids. Now raids are high level multi-person instances that we've seen throughout these types of games in the past. Uh, you see them in World of Warcraft or Destiny or Borderlands and usually what they are are four to ten to even forty person encounters with very high level enemies that require very specific mechanics in order to beat these, these enemies. Now we've already gotten confirmation that these instances exist in Anthem. Uh, they're called Strongholds and they're going to be four player uh, occurrences that happen late game. They have very high loot drop uh, and they're going to 
might take in between 30 to 45 minutes in order to carry out. Now, relative to some of the other raids that we've seen, 30 to 45 minutes isn't very long, but I really like the idea that multiple players are gonna get to work together in order to carry out these very high level, very hard end game experiences. And these will also be great ways for uh, Bioware to expand on the universe. Uh, usually raids have a lot of lore to them, a lot of story because you're spending lots of time in a certain area. They can tell you lots of things about it. And so I'm really, really excited to see how Anthem handles this type of content. Speaking of lore, that brings us to number four on our list. So lore is an extremely important part of a game. It gives you context. It gives you a reason why you're doing what it is what you're doing. Uh, we've seen lore delivered in a number of different ways through uh, different games. Uh, Destiny had the Grimoire cards. Division had audio logs. Skyrim had entire books that you could just go around and pick up and read. Uh, and this idea that lore can come from many different sources has already been addressed uh, in, a, in an interview with game director John Warner by My Name is Bife very recently. Uh, and so we have already have gotten confirmation that we're going to be getting our lore through things like runes that you find throughout the world, things like item descriptions. That would be more akin to how Dark Souls delivered its lore. And then finally, there's going to be a codex in which all of this story and all of this context and lore is going to be stored. I don't know if the codex has a name or if it's just going to be called the codex, but I'm very excited to learn more about this world, right? We want to dive into Anthem. We want to figure out where it came from. We want to figure out who the shapers are and who the enemies are and why it is that they're there and what what motivates them and where this magic comes from and, and how we can use it to our advantage. This kind of world building is extremely important to your motivation as a player and also the motivations of the character that you're controlling. So this is going to be really cool and I'm very interested to see how the lore develops and how they kind of shape Anthem and the world around it and the enemies that you're fighting against and uh, we'll see what happens. Finally, number one on the list is loot. So we've seen loot happen in a number of different systems throughout different games. Uh, the Division's loot works differently than Diablo's loot, which works differently than Destiny's loot, which will absolutely work differently than Anthem's loot. Now, thanks to Mark Darrow, we have a pretty good idea of what loot in Anthem is going to look like, which is why I'm so excited about it. And so here's a couple things that we know. Number one, we know that there's going to be different sets that you can get. So we've seen sets in Diablo 3 before. These are different pieces that are all along the same theme. And then using multiple pieces of these sets together in a single time uh, gives you extra bonuses on top of the stats that are already a part of the pieces of am uh, armor. Number two, we know that weapons will be able to be deconstructed and that will give you crafting parts in order to make new weapons or new armor later. We also know that like Destiny, weapons can transfer between javelins or between characters, but the armor pieces cannot. So this kind of makes sense because a gun can be easily transferred between one javelin and another, but maybe a, a piece of armor that goes on one of the big hulking tanks of a javelins might not work on one of the happy, small, fast interceptors. So that makes sense. Uh, another thing that's really cool is that there's going to be no limit on rarity equipping. So there's, if you have five legendary pieces of armor, there's nothing to keep you from equipping all five different pieces of legendary armor. We've seen in games before where you're only allowed to have one destiny on at a given time, so it's cool that we're not going to be limited by that. Finally, we know that there will be six levels of rarity in this game. There's going to be common, uncommon, rare, epic, legendary, and finally a ancient or elder type of weapon. And I think those will be more focused on uh, Anthem and the machines. Uh, and the shapers uh, and maybe something that they left behind, maybe special weapons that will have their magic imbued into them. So there you go everyone, that's five things that have got me very excited for Anthem as we get closer to that February 22nd release date. Make sure you like and subscribe if you want, share this video with your friends and we can all get excited for this game together. Until next time, my name is TIE Fighter and we'll see you soon.